Hello and what's up my friends, it's Thunderbob here, and tonight we're going to be taking a look at a Vatocera build, specifically for the Sin and Light Gun, uh, that is really easy and plug and play. I actually covered this a couple of months ago, and it's a really good build. Uh, you know, when I got the Sin and Gun initially, I had a lot of headache getting it set up, and I'd get a couple of games running, and then something would break, a Windows patch, emulator update, something would stop working. Uh, but what I found was Batocera is a really easy way to make the Sin and Light Gun work, just plug and play. And uh, a couple months ago I did a video on this build, and it had about 130 built-in games, it was really good. The only problem is it lacked a couple of systems because it was running Batocera 35, and uh, Batocera at that time lacked support for certain systems like the PlayStation 2. Since then, Batocera has updated to 37, and there is much better Sin and Light Gun support. Um, at this point, I had a couple of thoughts like, okay, do I want to just start from scratch, basically, because it's not easy to interact with your, with your build once it's on the drive. It's basically a Linux operating system and you can't interact with it easily in Windows any longer. So I was doing some, some internet searching, I was doing some research, and I found there are some pretty easy methods to actually update both the version of your Batocera on that drive, and also add additional games to it, actually just wirelessly. You don't even need to plug the drive into your, your main computer here. You do need a second computer to do this because you'll be running Batocera on one machine. And you'll be connecting to it wirelessly from your Windows machine and basically dropping the ROMs, the new games you want to add, also updating it. So in this video, I'm going to show you that, how to update your uh, Batocera build from 35 to 37 or whatever version you are running. And then also how to add in new ROMs like PlayStation 2, Wii, PlayStation 3, and then I'm going to show you some examples of those games running. And uh, yeah, let's go ahead and get started. The first thing I'd recommend doing is actually booting up Batocera and making sure how much free space you have. You could do that by going into the systems menu and then into information. And you can see right here it shows the different partitions, how much space you have both on the user disk and also the system disk. And if you're using that build that I posted previously, you should have about 100 gigs free. All right, and once you've established you've got enough space to update Batocera and also to add some new games in, you're going to want to enable your, your network. You can either do this by connecting wired or wirelessly. I'm actually wired, but in here you can enable Wi-Fi and connect to your specific Wi-Fi network. And once you enable that Wi-Fi, you should see uh, where you can enter your SSID or your key. It's as easy as that to get connected to your wireless network. And next up, we're going to update. And this is pretty easy. Just from within the interface, you go to update and downloads. Scroll down, make sure check for updates is enabled. I would use the stable branch. You can go beta if you want, but stable is just the most likely to be working. And then I'm already updated, but from here, it would actually just start your update process. They'll have like a little thing at the top of the screen telling you the percentage, and then eventually it'll prompt you to restart. And from there, you should be running V37. All right, now it is time to get some new games onto your drive. First thing I'll mention is you need to come back here and figure out your IP address. Uh, this is not my external IP address. Don't think you're going to hack me. This is my internal network address. Okay, and now we're going to actually get the games from our primary computer over to our Batasura machine. Uh, you want to do this on the computer with your ROMs, obviously, and you want to run Batocera, leave it running on the other machine. You could have this on like a notebook on any real computer, just something that will run. It doesn't have to be able to run games. You just need another machine to be able to run Batocera to connect to it. Go to any file explorer window. And then we're going to type in that IP address. I actually have already done this before, so it's right here. But that's all I did was type it in. Now, because I've already connected, it remembers this network share. It normally will come up and it'll prompt you for a username and password. And the defaults for Batocera is a username of root, R -O -R, excuse me, R-O-O-T, and a password of Linux, L-I-N-U-X, root and Linux, all lowercase. And from there, this is actually uh, the, the storage on your USB drive. This should look familiar to anyone that's used like a front end, um, you know, coin ops, um, launch box, things like that. If you've ever gone in and you played around, you've added your own titles, um, that's, you know, you should be pretty familiar with this. There's a ROMs folder and it's just your IP address, share, and then ROMs. And here is where you could drop most of your games. Um, the main reason I did this, the biggest reason is because there were some PlayStation 2 classics, you know, Time Crisis 2, Time Crisis 3, 
um, that I really wanted to play. And those are the easiest ways to do it. You know, the, the main version is kind of buggy and not really supported very well. Um, but the PlayStation 2 version works pretty flawlessly. So all you would need to do is come in here and find the PlayStation 2 and just drop the files in here. If you're unsure if your file tape is supported, almost every folder is going to have a text file. And this will tell you what file extensions are accepted. So if you're not sure if the version you have will work, it's as simple as checking that text file. I would also mention there is a really nice um, light gun Batocera pack on archive.org. It's pretty easy to find if you if you just Google for it. And it has uh, almost everything that was in the base pack, but it also has like the PlayStation 2, the PlayStation 3, the Wii, just a bunch of additional stuff. And it's as simple as just coming in here. And this actually has the BIOS, which I'll show you where these go also. But it also has the ROMs. I didn't I didn't use all of uh, the ROMs that were in this pack, but just the ones I was kind of interested in. All you do is drag them, drop them here. And if you want, when you're done, you can go back to your Batacera machine, go back into the system information, and it'll show you the space. And hopefully it has gone, you know, the, the amount of use space has gone up, and that'll correlate with what you've, what you've sent over there. And for the BIOS, uh, it's in the share folder and then the BIOS folder. And if you're using that previous pack that I posted, this already has pretty much every BIOS in existence. They were nice enough to include that. But if you're using like a clean build, like you're following this and you're just updating your build, uh, you were previously using it, you made yourself, you may not have the BIOS in here. It's just a matter of dragging and dropping, um, you know, from, from if you've downloaded this archive archive.org pack, you can just drag and drop them from this location. I already had them, so I don't need to do that. And then you can go back to your Batocera machine. Uh, you want to go into the game settings and update your game list. This will add all of those new games into the Batocera interface. Um, they will not have the fancy art, though. You can go to the scraper, and this will actually scrape from several different databases. Uh, all of the art. And you can go in here and get into very specifics on what, you know, do you want videos? Do you want marquee art? What do you want? You can also go to different sources. My favorite is to use... Uh, the screen scraper. You do need a username and password. It is free. Just go to the website, create an account, and that will do all the heavy lifting for you to make your games look nice and uh, have the nice fancy art and videos and everything so it matches the rest of your the rest of your build. And you can see here, here are some of the newer systems that I've added. Uh, we And you'll notice there's a few spots where like the art uh, hasn't been scraped correctly. I do need to go back in here and clean it up. That scraper will do most of the work for you. Um, but if like a title has like a misspelling or extra character, sometimes it's a little funky. So I do need to come in here and clean it up a little bit. But you can see here, here are all the Wii games that I've added. Uh, Wii, I actually own almost every one of these games in a physical version. But it actually, for the most part, these games run better with the Sindon Light Gun. Uh, it, you know, the on the original Wii hardware, it was more like dragging the cursor across the screen. Where the Sindon feels much more like an arcade experience. You're actually aiming at... At the screen where you want to fire here's my playstation 2 build a lot of classics in here uh, i did not have a playstation 2 growing up i missed out on all these light gun games and time crisis 2 is probably my favorite light gun game of all time so i'm so excited to be able to finally play this uh, like it was meant to be played and it really does feel like i played through the arcade version multiple times and it i'm going to show you the footage here in a moment it is very very close to that arcade experience PlayStation 3. It didn't scrape the uh, all the art for PlayStation 3. I need to go back in here and find out why it didn't give me any of the, the titles here, so it's a little, little funky looking. Um, but we got some House of the Dead. PlayStation 3 is the system I've had the most issues with. I'm going to talk about that when I get uh, over to the PlayStation 3 portion of this video. Uh, I also did add some Model 3, Lost World, Star Wars Trilogy. I had a little bit of issues with Star Wars Trilogy, but Lost World worked fine. And I'm going to spend just a moment showing you like one game from each system just to be able to give you kind of an idea of the performance and uh, what to expect, many thoughts on it. Uh, PlayStation 2 out of the box, I think, was the one that worked the best. You can see here, I don't have crosshairs on. I'm just able to one-to-one, -one, you know, hit most of these shots. Um, it feels pretty close to arcade perfect. Like the PlayStation 2 port was always pretty, pretty awesome. And uh, I do love this game a lot. Um, I didn't have to configure anything. Literally, I just dropped the ROMs in that folder. 
and I was running V37, booted up PlayStation 2. There's an in-game um, where you have to like align the crosshairs, and after doing that, it just runs. It runs pretty flawlessly. Uh, I'm a big fan of this game, so this is probably like the, the most excited thing I am about the whole pack on Crisis 2. So uh, I wish I could get a better way to get video out. Literally in this video, I'm just off screen filming this on my cell phone. Uh, if anyone knows a way to get video out on Battle of Sarah, let me know. I'd love to do like a video of a full playthrough of this game. And um, yeah, we'll jump to the next game. And here's just a moment of Time Crisis 3 also running on PlayStation 2. This is a little bit newer uh, release and um, comparatively, I guess, to, to Time Crisis 2. I'm not as familiar with 3. I've, I, there's actually a, a movie theater near me that still has this. And my daughter has been enamored with it, so I wanted to check this out as well. Uh, and, uh, yeah, it runs pretty flawlessly. Um, it does have that weapon change system, which I think was introduced in this in this title. Previous uh, Time Crisis did not have that mechanic from my memory. And, uh, yeah, it's pretty pretty good. Uh, and it runs fine. Again, out of the box, drop the ROM into the folder, and it just works. So, we have Time Crisis 3. And next up, we're going to look at PlayStation 3. This is House of the Dead 4. Not my favorite House of the Dead game, but it's the newest one in this build. And uh, it runs reasonably well. Like, out of the box, it performs. Like, the graphics are good. Uh, FPS is fine. But the problem I'm having is the controls. The default controls are kind of wonky. And this is probably because each game is a little different. This game wants me to waggle the controller at certain times. Like, when I get grabbed or when I reload, and I cannot figure out how to um, actually uh, tie that to any other button. And there's no, obviously this engine doesn't have any kind of uh, support for waggling. So uh, I know there are people who've had this working. I'm going to go research those posts. I'm pretty sure I can make it work. But out of the box, the controls were a little bit wonky here. And the other system I added was the Wii. And out of the box, this worked perfectly. Uh, no real complaints. Controls were good. Performance is good on my machine. Um, and uh, yeah, there's a lot of good light gun games for the Wii. Um, House of the Dead Overkill is maybe my favorite House of the Dead game. It's a toss-up between this and 2. 2 is such a classic. Uh, 2 is like unintentionally cheesy. And Overkill, they like really lean into like the cheese factor and go into like kind of a grindhouse aesthetic. Um, this is right around the era that, like, that Tarantino Grindhouse movie came out. And uh, it's pretty good. I remember playing this with a buddy. We I, I've owned this game for a long time. But one afternoon, we, we just played through the entire thing in like an eight-hour span, unlocked all the guns, upgraded everything. And uh, yeah, I'm really impressed with the, the Wii performance. You'll notice a little bit of like stuttering at times. And um, I the, the original game had that also. I don't think that's anything on the system here. Uh, and this is also about, I think, the most demanding Wii light gun game as well. And it runs it runs just fine on my machine. Your mileage may vary, though. I am running a 3080 and a 10,700K. So, uh, you know, if you're running an older machine, uh, no guarantees on, on your Wii actually running here. Okay, so there you have it. Um, at this point, if you follow this video, you have updated your Batocera build to version 37. You've probably added some ROMs in and you're testing them out. Um, overall, I've been really impressed with Batocera and 37 is just that much better. It added more systems and more plug and play functionality. Um, I do need to play around with like PlayStation 3. That's the one kind of sore spot right now, the controls in particular. Uh, if you get any tips on how to get that working, please feel free to drop a comment below. Uh, but if I do figure everything out, I may post another video on how to get that set up further. Uh, if you do like what I'm doing here, uh, please do like, subscribe, drop me a comment. And I do want to thank everyone for watching tonight. Have a good night, everybody.